As chief climate and geoscientist at Munich Re, what do you put this down to? How closely are you able to link the events we've seen with climate change? Well, uh, thanks for having me on, on this uh, show this morning and, and good morning here from Munich in Germany. Um, well, Munich Re is collecting lots of information from natural catastrophes worldwide since, since more than four decades. And of course, also here in Germany. And we see this event, this ongoing event, as part of a trend which we have been obser observing actually since a couple of decades. And if you look deeper into the causes of these ever increasing losses from the severe convective storms and, and flooding and heavy precipitation events, uh, we clearly see a link uh, to, to climate change. We see indications at least. Why is this the case? Because we do detailed analysis of the loss trends. And if we take out drivers like socioeconomic factors, so increasing population and wealth, we still see these changes uh, with the patterns of, of natural catastrophes. And that's the indication that climate change plays a role already. Uh, and, and uh, of course, Ernst, working for an insurance company, a reinsurance company, you'll be, you'll be crucially focused on, on the future and whether this, this continues. Uh, how much more frequently will we see these kinds of events taking place in the future? Well, we have to expect that the trend I was just talking about will continue in the future. That means the frequency and the intensity of these events is going to increase over the next years and probably way into the future, so the next decades. And we have to prepare ourselves uh, to, to cope with these increasing losses. And that's about internal risk management of a reinsurance company, so we have to prepare ourselves uh, with our own uh, capital allocation and, and pricing of the risks. But we also have a clear call to our clients, to our customers, to the people out there to inform themselves uh, about uh, these ever increasing risks from natural disasters and take actions. And actions have to be taken, if you look at the pictures we right now having on the screen, both on, on the public level, so communities have to improve resilience uh, uh, towards these events, but also private action has to be taken with respect to making the homes better flood-proof uh, and, and wind-proof. That's interesting. So you see a role for individuals, you see a role for local governments perhaps, and maybe, uh, maybe national governments as well. I mean, what are the steps that, that you would deem to be critical to better prepare people for the future you describe? The first and most important step is to get informed. It is not that this information, this data are not available. You can get information about your local hazard situation, so the probabilities of such events occurring, be it flash floods, heavy rainfalls, be it high winds, be it hail or so. You get this information either from local authorities, like the hydrological institutes, or you can get it from your insurer. Uh, in, especially in Germany, we have since many years a flood zoning scheme called ZURS, and this zoning scheme is available through the German Insurance Association. And if you look at these flood hazard maps, you know exactly whether you are in a high hazard zone or not. And based on such transparency or such information, you can take actions. And again, that uh, applies to both the individuals, the homeowners, but also to local communities. And in the meantime, mm. with increasing analysis, a uh, lot of this information available in digital formats, we as Munich Re, we provide this to our clients and to the public if interested. And, and Ernst, a lot of what we've talked about here is about protecting property, I suppose, from the effects of, of climate change then. If we're going to take action against climate change and to try to reduce the occurrence of these events, what time horizon are we talking about? Over, over what, what number of decades do we have to wait until we see some of these climate change policies deliver? Well, indeed, we do have this dualism, adaptation to the unavoidable consequences. And these actions have to be taken now, and they're also effective in the short term. However, mitigation, so the reduction of CO2 emissions, or in more general terms, greenhouse gas emissions, has to continue in a much, much faster way. We are way too slow. And the reality is carbon dioxide, for instance, is active in the atmosphere for roughly about 100 years. 
With other words, the emissions which we already have put into our atmosphere will be active, climate active, for the next two or three generations. So on the emission mitigation side, we talk about much longer timescales uh, to, uh, to bring the climate back, hopefully, to what it was about 100 years ago with less frequent and less intense weather-related catastrophes.